Hello, everyone, and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host, Sherry, and today is a very special skincare Saturday. It is the beginning of 2020. We've basically been doing this whole skincare craziness for one solid year. I know. Can you believe it? Woo! Happy one year! to our faces. You know, a lot of times in the comments, depending on whatever skincare video it is, you guys will say something like, oh, I see a big difference. Oh, I see this. Oh, I see this. That's great. But it got me wondering, like, do we see a big difference? What is the story after one year of taking care of our skin? Do I look one year older? Do I look exactly the same? Do I look 10 years younger? Do I look any different at all? That is what we're going to take a look. We're gonna dive deep into the skincare that we've been doing over the last year and how it has affected us. In case you're not a diehard real lifer and you know nothing about my skincare journey, then let me just sum it up for you real quick. I am, you know when you get older and you have to think about your age? When you were younger, you never thought about your age once. You were like, oh yeah, this year I'm 17. Oh, now I'm 21. As I'm older, I, and it's not like a joke, like I forget, like there was this one time, I swear to God, my birthday was coming up. I wanna say it was a few years ago. People kept asking me how old I was gonna be. And I think I was telling everybody I was gonna be 43. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be 43, I'm gonna be 43, I'm gonna be 43. It took a friend of mine finally saying, um, no, dum-dum, you are gonna be 42. And sometimes I like mark it up even higher. Maybe it's because I look at myself in the mirror, I look like I'm older than I actually am. When I started this channel one year ago, I was 46, so now I'm 47 going to be 48 in May. At the point of starting this channel, I was a 46 year old who never really took care of their skin. When I was younger, I was never, I, I wasn't into it. I guess maybe I took for granted. I never, I never schooled myself on skincare. I just, you know, always thought, oh, you have the skin that you have and yeah, you're gonna get older and you're probably gonna get wrinkly, but what can you do about it? You know, my mom never told me at a young age, you should wash your face before you go to bed. You should at the very least put a moisturizer on. You should start taking care of your skin now. Maybe stay out of the sun. You know, those sorts of things to suspend the signs of aging. I never really realized that. I went to bed every single night with a full fucking face of makeup on every single night. It wasn't until recently before starting this channel that I had a girlfriend named Sarah who was really into her skincare. And actually she bought me a lot of the skincare that I had. She was appalled when I told her that I never really took care of my face. Like she was like, that's it, we can't be friends anymore. Like it was crazy to her. And, and I'm still learning now. It's been a year and you guys will tell me in the comments like things that you know maybe everybody knows and just someone who's never really thought about it. Like what the taste of that peel from Ordinary is. Why you put certain products on in the night because they can't be in the sun. That's why you sleep in them. Do a nighttime regimen because when you're at rest, you're skin is rebuilding itself. Like I never knew all of those things. I really didn't. At 46, it was showing. Like I started looking in the mirror and was like, what the fuck is happening? To be real honest, I started seeing signs of my mom, my older mom, you know, the age she is now. I started seeing that in me and I was like, oh no. Like I'm not as old as my mom. I'm 46. Why am I starting to see signs of my mom in my face? Holy shit, we gotta do something about this. So together with Davis, poking and poking and poking, mom do a YouTube channel, mom do a YouTube channel, which in fact, he only wanted it to be video games. And I was like, uh, no, I mean, I love playing video games, but not enough to play them all the time. And who the fuck wants to watch a 46 year old play fucking video games all the time? No one. So I used the YouTube channel as sort of a reason or a springboard, if you will, to start a skincare routine. I made skincare Saturdays as a way to force myself to start taking care of my skin. And I thought that, you know, quite possibly, at the age of 46, I was too far gone. Is there any hope for 
this shitty wrinkly face that I have? I think there is. I think that the point of this year in review video is that while it would have been amazing if I started a skincare routine at a young age, starting it whenever is beneficial. While I haven't compared my day one picture to what I look like a year later, I know there's a difference. I don't know how drastic the difference is, but I do know there's a difference. And I've had people tell me that there is definitely a difference. It's important to start a skincare regimen, but I don't think that if you haven't done so yet, at whatever age you are, don't give up hope. Things will work. It's just about finding the right things. And we know there's a lot of shit out there. There's a lot of shit that doesn't work and we're gonna look at them today. But for the most part, if you can find something that gives you a glimmer of hope and you can stick with it, I think we can. Maybe not completely reverse the signs of aging, but maybe put them to a halt, maybe freeze you know, the face that we have now so it doesn't look like a hundred year old face. So let's go back to day one. Hello everyone and welcome to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and today is our first official episode of Skincare Saturdays. Day one of my skincare was actually January 19th of 1999. And what do we do? I have, I have a box of stuff. This derma roller is the thing that started it all. In my ongoing effort to not be so damn wrinkly. I'm trying something new. I was like, oh, hell yeah. We're gonna start Derma Rolling. This was the skincare product that started it all. Day one photo before even doing the Derma Roller. Now, I learned a lot during this Derma Rolling situation. Do your research because when you buy stuff at the TJ Maxx, maybe it doesn't have all of the necessary directions in the world. And I don't know if you remember this, but I was gonna Derma Roll on my face every single day and turns out after doing some little uh, Googles, you're not supposed to do that. Depending on the needle width, you're supposed to do it like once a month, once every two weeks, what have you. I learned a lot right away from day one with the Derma Roller. Then after the Derma Roller, we tried out Neutrogena. Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair's Derm Proven Retinol works so fast, it takes only one week to reveal younger looking skin, making wrinkles look so last week. Neutrogena. I call bullshit. Now, a lot of you guys came for me, and still, to this day, I mean, it has been a year since Neutrogena came out, and I still get, it's working, you should use it longer. Okay, well, point of the story was that video was me debunking these outlandish claims that these skincare companies make, and Neutrogena in particular, with those two products, I forget, it was like the retinol or whatever, you know, our friend Jennifer Garner, the whole claim was one week. One week you will see results. And that's why I did that video. It wasn't because I wanted to test it for a month. I wanted to test out that claim. Hail to the no, I didn't see results in one week. And I did like three times the wrinkle fighting power and that shit didn't work. Now, did I continue to use it after the one week test? I did because it was expensive. Even though it pissed me off, I would be more pissed if I threw it away. Well, first I stopped using it because I was like, this is bullshit. And then I went out and found, to this day is kind of like my favorite, like holy grail of the skincare starter. The, the thing that made me want to continue, the product that I actually saw, and I'm very, very lucky I stumbled upon it early on because if I hadn't, who knows where I would be now because I tend to get very discouraged if things don't work. Thankfully, I stumbled upon The Rock. I loved The Rock. I loved everything about The Rock. I loved the price of The Rock. I loved that they didn't make any speedy time promises. And I loved that I saw results. Gosh, should I do that for only like two weeks? Or maybe I did it for a month. I can't be quite sure. But I know that we all saw results with The Rock. Like, The Rock is amazing. So if you haven't done any skincare regimen or you're looking for a product, I wholeheartedly recommend The Rock. Hashtag not fucking sponsor, cause you know no one sponsors me. I buy my own shit, I test it out for us to decide if we all need to waste our money or not. And The Rock is like still to this day, there are very few products over the last year that I've tried that I would tell you guys 
Yes, yes for sure. And the rock is one of them. The other thing that I love, which I haven't been doing, I'm not gonna lie, it's time consuming, but I love it, the laser beam. This is another one of those things that I was, you know, just in the TJ Maxx or the Marshalls or wherever the hell. I found this, it was the best find ever. I don't know if you remember, but it was like on super, 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 super clearance. $23. Ah, the fans, the crowd goes wild. How on earth? Skin Clinical Reverse Anti-Aging Light Therapy. It's a product still to this day. It wasn't super marked down on clearance at the Marshalls because it no longer exists. It exists now and it is expensive. The rock made me see results, but this made me see real good results. Like, I don't know if you guys remember like the jowl situation that was happening. This tightened up all, I mean, I'm not saying they're like super firm, but this tightened that all up. The problem is, and I've said it in many other videos and I have not heeded my own words. It's a lifestyle. You have to give every single night of your life for 30 minutes a night for 12 weeks. And then after the 12 weeks, you're supposed to do maintenance two to three nights a week for 30 minutes to keep up all the changes that happen. Well, okay, fine. You can call it lazy. You really can't. I'm not gonna make any excuses about it, but come on, you guys. I mean, I've tried so many products and they, they all have their time limits. So by the time I get done testing this one product, 10, 15, 20 minutes in the bathroom, rub it on a bunch of shit, the last thing I'm gonna do is like, do this for 30 minutes. Cause you can't really like watch good TV when you're doing this because it beeps every like three minutes and you gotta move it to a different zone. I mean, I love it. I love it. I love it. And I do need to start using it again, but it is a time commitment, a good time commitment because we did see amazing changes with this. I know this does a good job. See, and that's the, that's the second thing is in, in testing products, like I know for 100% certain the rock works. I just want to keep using the rock, but I can't because we're testing all of these other products. I know this works. I mean, can you imagine the rock and this together? It'd be like, boom, back in time, I'm 21 years old. But unfortunately with testing other products, I can't really use this because then how would we know if the product that I was testing was completely effective? The last thing we need is like, oh yeah, XYZ product looks like it worked, but really was it this that was doing the job for XYZ and XYZ was just not doing anything at all? I'm fine when use this as often as I should, but I know it works and I loved it, loved it. Then, you know, then we did like, a bunch of shit. Again, I don't, I, I mean, I just have this box and it's just like, it's like taking a trip down memory lane in a weird way. It's like, oh, I remember that dark spot. <laughs> I remember Wrinkle 87. Those times were great. You know, it's like, it's, it's very weird. But we went through a whole dark spot situation where we tried this, Palmer's, we tried, what's the Jennifer Aniston one? Avino. And I don't know, but I think our goal for 2020 is we gotta find a fucking dark spot corrector because Avino didn't work, this one didn't work. Oh, and originally we tried, was it L'Oreal? That was the very first dark spot corrector I tried and that didn't work for shit. The Avino one worked okay. Palmer's dark spot correcting cleanser, no. I mean, clearly you can see the dark spots are still here. Even in all of those dark spots, after pictures, dark spot. Hi, how you doing? Oh, we did a bunch of face masks. It was a competition. I remember that was kind of a fun video. Really didn't see any improvements in my wrinkles or anything because we were just testing face masks, but it was still fun. The origins, yeah, remember? This little guy right here, and it was an Ipsy sample to boot. It is the active charcoal mask to clear pores. This one was good. Test all the cleansers, remember? Remember the cleansers, the Paris Hilton cleanser? None of them really clean your face like they say they're gonna do. Oh, the big one that we did was, remember this? Vitamin C situation where we made vitamin C ice cubes, bought some vitamin C serums. What is this? Violet C Radiance Mask by Tatcha. We could see some stuff with the vitamin C. I don't think it was like super drastic, but maybe there was stuff that happened there. And the big disappointment after Jennifer Garner was Cindy Crawford. 
Meaningful beauty. I still got it. I still got a lot. I gave a lot to Mariana at my work. I still have some, but the subscription is officially canceled and I no longer get Meaningful Beauty products because eight products in eight weeks. Remember that? That was fucking torture. Horrible. That was the worst test I've ever done. I want to say in my whole life, but I've only been testing skincare products for a year, but that's how I feel about eight products in eight weeks with Meaningful Beauty. That was bullshit. That whole thing, I mean, I have people in the comments of that video saying that my skin does look different and it probably does. Maybe it looks a little brighter. I don't know if it looks less wrinkly at all. If there is a difference in my after picture, I refuse to admit that there is one because not only was eight products in eight weeks super time consuming, we found out that Cindy duped me for years. Cindy Crawford admits to using Botox. Let's just sit here for a second. She's had Botox and quite possibly maybe even a facelift. I'm not really sure about that. I, I was crushed. So I was harboring bitter feelings for an entire eight weeks while trying these products. And then secondly, the products are hella expensive. It just wasn't worth it. It just wasn't worth my time. It wasn't worth the money and it wasn't worth the bullshit Meaningful Beauty was throwing at me. Yeah, there was that. <gasps> Hold the phone, dude. I just remembered something that we tested that was ridiculous. I don't even have it to show you because I threw it right in the trash, but do you remember that ridiculous sucker stupid thing? <sighs> wait, wait. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty sectiony if you ask me. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, was that a waste of money? That was bullshit, I couldn't even, that one I couldn't even test for like longer than a day. It was like the worst thing ever. It did not work at all. It only left hickeys all over my face. Remember that? That was hysterical. I mean, it was kind of funny, but I was pissed because I wasted my money. I threw that shit right in the garbage. Oh, 30 second neck lift. <laughs> that was dumb. That was another dumb one. It didn't do anything. And certainly not in 30 seconds. That was fucking dumb. Oh, a big one I forget about because I'm still active in it right now as we speak. My bracelet, my candid aligners, because they say if you have straighter, whiter teeth, it helps with the look of a younger appearance. I have four more aligners left to go before my treatment plan is over and you change your aligners out every two weeks. So two months, basically I have left. I don't know, you guys might not remember my crooked ass teeth before. And they weren't that crooked ass. Um, my bottoms were pretty bad. I don't, I'm gonna take them out, but I'm not gonna do it like while you're looking at spit coming in at me. So, I just took out my bottom aligner. See, and then like, it's looking pretty good, huh? Yeah, they're getting pretty straight. I mean, I don't know what it's done for the look of my younger appearance, but I still have two months to go on this. But again, that didn't really have anything to do with the millions of wrinkles. And what video did I count my wrinkles on? One, two, three, four, 19. Are the bags under my eyes wrinkles? 30, I think that's 31 and 32. Fuck me, man. 39, one very faint one on the forehead so we can call it 40 wrinkles on the front of my face. Yay, perfect. That was funny. I mean, looking back, it was funny that I counted all my wrinkles, but while I was in it and counting all my wrinkles, it was a dark time. <laughs> a lot more wrinkles than I thought. But anyways, we're back to almost the present and talking about ordinary, which I did for two weeks. And then we decided that we needed to keep testing it. I mean, it was ordinary was one of those ones. And I think the reason why I wanted to keep testing it is because I feel like I see something, but I also know that there's a lot of hype behind Ordinary, and I didn't know if I was talking myself into it because of all the hype or if I really was seeing something. Then we all decided to do a three-week test, which we just finished up. That three-week test actually ended our year of skincare. So, what do we think? Let's take an after picture, shall we? So yeah. The point of me wanting to do this video, not only for me, my own self, to see like where I started and where I am now as far as what my face looks and 
where my wrinkles are. I know in my heart of hearts, there has been a change in the texture of my skin, in my overall appearance, in like maybe the firmness, maybe even dare I say the brightness. I know that over this year, there has been a change, whether it's significant or minimal. You guys be the judge. I don't really know. Let's get a little Dr. Phil here. Not to mention, I think my inward appearance, I guess, because of what has been happening to my face over this last year, even if it is minimal, not only have I gotten a few people, it hasn't been like every, but every, you know, every day and everybody that I run into, they're like, you look at me. No, it's not like that. But if those few have helped boost my confidence, me looking in the mirror and not just uh, dreading like looking in the mirror has been a big confidence boost. It's also helped with exercising more and I'm like trying to transform my body into something that makes me feel good too. I think that this has a lot to do with that. Taking care of myself just in general starting a year ago, which is something I didn't do before. I took it for granted, I really did. I just kind of thought like, you are who you are, you age how you age, it's all genetics, there's nothing you can do. But in reality, simply washing your face every night, it makes a huge difference. So again, whether you are young or older and you haven't started a skincare regimen or you have, maybe you just started one and you're feeling a little discouraged, I'm here to say, don't, don't. But snap yourself out of it because a year of washing your face and putting moisturizing cream makes a difference. A year does sound like a long time, but it goes by like that. And you'll start to see it little by little. It's not like one year ago I looked a certain way and now I look this way. There were changes over that year that helped inspire me to continue to take care of my skin and to learn more and to find the right products. I think we're still on the hunt for those right products. Like I don't think that we found the fountain of youth yet, but I think that we found kind of enough that we can mix and match and like kind of slow down the aging process. It's never too late. Don't give up. You can wake up one morning like I did one year ago and look at your face and go, what the fuck has happened? I swear it was like, I woke up like after turning 46, everything about me, my body said, you're 46 now, we give up. Like I just noticed everything, like the arms, the face, the neck, the stomach, like I just noticed everything. My body went into give up mode and I think it was like, well, you've given up, you gave up long ago. You haven't been doing anything, so why should we still care? And now, one year later, I, would, I wouldn't go as far to say, oh my God, you look 10 years younger. But maybe I still look 46 when I'm really 47 and I'm gonna be 48 in a couple of months. So there's that. <laughs> I guess I'm just saying you have time. It's not too late. Start taking care of your skin. Hopefully the earlier the better, but if it isn't earlier, it's okay. Whatever makes you happy, if your wrinkles are bothering you or if the texture of your skin is bothering you or whatever it is, your smile is bothering you. Those are things that you have control over to some effect. I think I'm different. I mean, I've always been a pretty confident person. I think you get what I'm saying. Point of the story is, never too fucking late. Wash your face, dude. Wash your face. Don't go to bed with your makeup on. That's all I'm saying. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. There's lots of things, you know, in store for 2020. Make sure you ring that notification bell so that you don't miss them. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out.